Do you mind talking about what happened with BBC in Ghana and the black woman? Oh, the <laughs> statement. Everyone loved that statement. That's um, very famous. There's no such thing as, as a black woman in Ghana. I'm a woman in Ghana. We are all black. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they used that clip. I think I said, I'm not, oh, I said, there is no such thing as a black woman mm -hmm. in Ghana. I'm a woman in Ghana. Yes. And, um, you know, that was in response to a question. Mm. The question was, as a black woman, how has, what has your experience been like doing business? Mm -hmm. And I immediately was like, as a black woman, you know, like that, I don't believe needs to be the qualifier of the question because right. if it's the color of my skin, I'm a part of the majority. Mm -hmm. You might want to say as an American, how right. is it doing business? As a Jamaican American, how is it? As a woman in business, how is it doing? You know, or if I were a white or Asian woman, then you can ask as an Asian woman, as a white woman, how is it doing right. business here? But to come and ask me and my blackness, mm -hmm. In, your in this <laughs> in this Ghana about my black mm -mm -mm. you can't lead that way right so it was almost a correction to say you know there's no such thing as othering me when I'm not othered right, right. not from the color of my skin wow. you know wow. so that was um that was the only thing but still you know phenomenal opportunity great interview um, awesome team but yeah, that was also an opportunity to have that conversation starter. Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing, amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we speak to people who moved back from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent and doing an amazing thing. And on this episode we have here someone special. This amazing woman is Jamaican American and uh, seven years ago she moved from the US and currently here in Ghana. Uh, she was featured on BBC uh, and uh, her story is quite interesting, you should go check it out. And uh, Three years later, I'm here to, you know, ask her, are you still enjoying Ghana? How is Ghana treating you and how is business? Is it easy succeeding here? So we are here in her office. So without further ado, Lakeisha Ford, welcome to the show. Thank okay. you so much for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have heard a lot about you. Okay. Uh, I, I heard from Zaina, who used to work for CNN. I saw your story on BBC. You were featured about three years ago. Yeah. And wow, when I saw that video, I'm like, wow, that's a powerful woman speaking. <laughs> so I've been, I've been hearing a lot, but I want to hear from you. People are watching from the diaspora. People have been contemplating moving back uh, to the continent. People don't know, is it a good idea? But you did that. How, how long ago? Let's, let's talk about like, this. Actually, it was eight years ago. Wow. Um, but I made the decision to move seven years ago. Wow. Yes, That's so I always say seven to eight years. How did it start and at what point did you felt like I should start looking into Africa? Yeah, so my story is a little bit unconventional. Um, so I'm Jamaican American. I went to school in the States. Um, I'm a graduate of Spelman College, the illustrious Spelman College. Mm -hmm. and. During my time at Spelman, I double majored. I studied economics and international studies, so two degrees. And one of the rec one of the requirements for international studies majors, we had to study abroad. Mm. So it was between I had to choose a place to study, and it was between South Africa and Ghana. Wow! I know, and. <laughs> Um, this at that time that would have been my second study abroad my mm -hmm. first year in school I went to China Wow yeah so I studied in China um, I studied at the Beijing language and cultural university and honestly that's where my interest in Africa sparked mm -hmm. um, that was during a time where China was developing its industry and mm -hmm. also traveling in droves mm -hmm. to um, to Africa wow. 
and you kept I kept learning and hearing about Sino African relations, Chinese African relations. And I was just like, why are the Chinese going to Africa? What is going on over there? So that kind of sparked my interest. And when it was time to study abroad officially, uh, I said I was going to come to the continent. So it was between South Africa and Ghana. Mm -hmm. And I had some girls in my class. They were from Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, no, you absolutely need to go to Ghana. Like, South Africa is... Yeah. You can always experience South Africa, but please go to Ghana. So I did that, and that was 2008. Yes, yeah, so I actually came here when I was a teenager for the wow. first time. Wow. Um, and that, that's how I first came to Ghana. It was through an exchange program. It was through international education. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate for it. It's really the reason why I am who I am and mm -hmm. how I do my work today is because wow. of that. So that was my introduction. And then my interest got sparked when I was in China. Mm. Yes, um, but when I came and I was here doing my exchange program, honestly, I just saw so many amazing things. And you know the typical story, what, what you see is not what the media portrays exactly. of the African continent. So, you know, naturally I was annoyed mm -hmm. at first, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do something about it. And this is where the spark to tell a more wholesome story about the African continent came wow. and honestly I believe that that's my North Star and a lot of the work that I've done has reflected the desire to see that happen. Wow so you, obviously you had stereotype because of what the Western media have shared so so many times what was some of the misconception you would say you had that made you kind of scratch your head like listen I would rather you know People would say you'd rather choose South Africa over yeah. Ghana because you don't know. Right. Uh, what would be some stereotypes? Yeah, you some of the stereo, some of the stereotypes that I had before coming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember interning that summer, and it was the summer before I was supposed to come to Ghana, mm -hmm. and some of my colleagues were like, "You're going to school there? <laughs> they have schools? Mm -hmm. They have universities?" You know, that was horrible. Wow. I, I didn't believe that, but that's a stereotype that I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I think the biggest stereotype, I didn't understand the currency exchange. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought maybe a dollar would go a really long way. Um, because in Jamaica, a dollar, a U.S. dollar, the exchange currency mm -hmm. is more favorable for right. people who are holding dollars. So I thought this same would be the be case same. in Ghana and interestingly enough that that was the <laughs> year they found oil off of the coast the Jubilee coast mm. so that's the year the economy in Ghana was doing quite well mm -hmm. and the US's economy crashed yeah. so I remember bringing 100 US dollars to the um, to the to uh, Forex mm -hmm. no to the Forex Bureau, Bureau. Mm -hmm. I gave them one hundred dollars, and I remember getting ninety nine CDs back. Wow, the the Ghana city was higher than the US yeah. dollars. Yes, <laughs> at that one point in time, I was in Ghana. Wow. Um, so you know, it was the the economy and everything was kind of positive and doing well and flourishing. So that was my introduction to Ghana. Wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. So oh, yes, this episode is brought to you by Terra Nova Home for the Elderly. And uh, this space is created by a lady from the diaspora or people from the diaspora who understand the needs of the diaspora and moving back from the U.S. and other uh, places around uh, the globe to Ghana and currently living here. Most people came back uh, retirement for their retirement. And um, sometimes, you know, not having a family member here is sometimes challenging. Um, if you are sick or the elderly at your home is sick, 
and you have to go to work. You can't just leave them alone. So you need to, you know, find places like Terranova Homes where you can, you know, um, you know, sign up. You know, they have nurses who are certified also in, in CPR training, very friendly, who can take care of, of um, the elderly with passion. Not just anyone just wanting to just do it for the money, but people who are, you know, dedicated with a craft and everything. And they are located in Tema Community 20, very close to medical facilities. So you don't have anything to worry, you know, very beautiful place. And yeah, check them out. Their name would be on the screen. Their telephone numbers will also be on the screen and also in the description, as well as their GPS or their landmark. So it will be very easy to look at them. Let's say if Jamaica was on the table, that lesson you have to go learn in Jamaica at that time. Your mom is from Jamaica, mm -hmm. your dad is from Jamaica. Would you have made that move? To go into Jamaica, unless... I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? I would have done it. Mm -hmm. I would have done it. Um, but I, you know, I grew up going to Jamaica every year of my life. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it would not have been anything that I had not seen. Right. It's like going home. Mm -hmm. So I know from my study abroad experience, okay. I wanted a wow. different experience. Wow. Let's talk about Ghana. Sure. How was it like, regardless of the stereotype, what your friends said, what it thought Africa was like, mm -hmm. when you touched down for the first time in 2008, mm -hmm. how was the feeling? Yeah, for me, I mean, I've always been a soul sister, like growing up super conscious, <laughs> like way before my time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like a full circle moment. Right. Um, I remember writing about the African continent mm -hmm. as a kid growing up. I went to a, how do I explain it, like a, a very Afrocentric primary school. It was mm -hmm. a French immersed primary school. Um, they taught us in French and all throughout the hallways there were flags of liberated black nations. Mm -hmm. um, we said the Pledge of Allegiance in French. Oh, wow. And my, we had to study a second language. Usually in the States, the second languages are like Latin focused like languages, your French, your Spanish, Portuguese. But for this school, you learn French and some English. Some of the classes were in English. And then the second languages were between Wolof and Creole. Mm. So Wolof spoken in Senegal in Gambia, Gambia. and um, Creole, I think that Creole was um, Haitian Creole. Mm -hmm. I chose Wolof. Okay. So that was the second language that I learned. So I say that to say uh, Afrocentricity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. blackness, mm -hmm. centering of blackness has mm -hmm. kind of been a part of my experience through my primary school. Okay in East Orange, New Jersey, mm -hmm. I called Toussaint L'Ouverture mm -hmm. in East Orange. Wow. And it was, it was an anom anomaly mm -hmm. because it was a public school, ran like a private school. We had to wear uniforms, everything, but we were, um, I would say, indoctrinated to be very proud of being black. Wow. That's so amazing. when I came to Ghana, it was just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, finally, it makes wow. sense. I kind of been reared to be here, mm -hmm. so. So after your, your program, how long until you, you're like, let me just move back to the continent mm -hmm. and stay permanent? To be honest, I kept coming back. Mm -hmm. um, after my undergrad years, I came back during, I think I waited like five years. I, I went to grad school, I worked. And after grad school, I was awarded um, a fellowship. Um, uh, I was a, awarded the Born Fellowship, so I came back as a Born Fellow, mm. which is not easy to get. <laughs> yeah. But I was able to um, get my uh, research awarded, and it was it was an amazing wow. experience. So wow. that brought me back, um, and yeah, I I did research, and then after decided to. Uh, do my service here and then I started a, a PR agency because I really wanted to work work on Africa affairs wow. really wanted to follow that North Star of mm -hmm. telling a more wholesome story so I started a PR agency that's literally one of the main reasons why Ford Communications exists. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So how did it start? How does that um, 
company started for you and why you felt it was so important for you to establish that company here in Ghana? I was at a crossroad where I was supposed to go back to the States and my plan was to join the Foreign Service as a public diplomacy Foreign Service officer, so a diplomat. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the fellowship, it kind of is a pipeline for that. So everything was set up for that. But I knew that the time was of the essence to really be focusing on uh, building here on the African continent in Ghana. Um, I knew that if I left, it would be very difficult to come back and really focus on the changes that I saw happening. I really wanted to represent those changes properly in the international sphere. Um, so, you know, I was just in a moment of wanting to focus. I knew my desire was to focus on uh, telling a more wholesome story of the African continent, doing nation branding in a way that focuses on entrepreneurs, uh, innovation, and um, really taking those stories and deploying them in the international space. So I, I didn't know of what position or job would allow me to do that, this directly, to work directly with the innovators, capture their stories, and connect with the international world. So I thought it was an opportune time to start the business wow. and yeah. Yeah, starting a business in Africa is quite interesting, I must say. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we talk about documentation, registering the company, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are saying, directors are saying, the are laid back. The timing here is not mostly appreciated. Um, how was your story at that time? How was the documentation process, establishing the company, like you know, when you moved back and, and established the brand? Yeah, um, it wasn't easy, but what I will say is your network is your net worth. Mm. <laughs> In terms of like, I had really awesome people around me that just supported me. Um, you know, if there was a gap in my understanding, uh, they helped me. Mm. So that's essentially how I kind of hacked that. I connected, stayed connected with people and they really supported me through that. And okay. I'm forever grateful for wow. that. So that's how that happened for me. Okay. So you, would you say there were some challenges that stood out you know, during this process that you'd like to share? Well, what I will say is what was challenging for me is hiring mm. and getting the right talent to support me in the journey. Okay. Um, you know, when you talk about wanting to deploy stories to an international market, mm -hmm. you know, th that takes a certain type of um, writing level and even understanding the nuances, cultural nuances of the international space plus Ghana. Um, if you're hiring from talent, talent here, you know, sometimes those nuances might not be covered. So it would, it would mean that I would have to work a little harder to right. get what I wanted. But I mean, with just a little bit of training, it's all possible. And that's, that's just how I hacked it, mm -hmm. you know, and I would say that was one of my biggest challenges. And then, to be very honest, the business culture is different. Really? Culture Why everywhere, yeah, culture everywhere is different. It's not one thing. Um, the way we do business in Jamaica, the way we do business in America, and the way we do business in Ghana is very different. Mm -hmm. We speak very different languages, even though everybody's speaking English. Yeah. You understand, and um, a skill that you have to know or know how to do is you have to be able to hear what's not being said. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. That's a skill, right. and you know, no one's gonna tell you that. Yeah, nobody's gonna you tell you that. How to speak the tree to get around that? Um, no, I just paid attention mm -hmm. I just paid attention and I adapted mm -hmm. tree yes you should by all means try your best to speak tree because my um, fellowship we had to actually do some language training so I literally studied tree wow. for some time before I came to Ghana 
Um, so I'm, I'm literate in Cree, but I don't speak as well as I can write or read it. Um, but you know, it helps with understanding, it helps with navigating. And I speak some Cree, but not that much. Really? But I understand more <laughs> than I can speak. Wow, that's yeah. nice. Let's let's talk about the businesses more on the businesses. You are actually uh, doing great here on the continent. There's a program coming in this uh, in January. What? Yes. Wood and water. water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's talk about it. How did that start, and uh, why it was so important for you to organize? Sh I, I say concert. You know, like something huge like that. Yeah, um, so I'm a Jamaican woman, and mm -hmm. as you know, as anybody knows, I'm going to look in the camera for this, <laughs> Jamaicans are very proud to be who they are, okay? Mm -hmm. You can't tell us nothing. Mm -hmm. So I say that to say I really love my culture, and it's just something that's a part of me. Um, and naturally, coming here, you see so many cultural uh, similarities between Jamaica and Ghana. Right. So A, I felt at home. B, I saw the love that... Ghanaians have for Jamaican culture, so I just thought it was a no-brainer to create more spaces where Ghanaians could enjoy Jamaican culture, and where I could also help Jamaicans see, like, yo, things are going in Ghana. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, things are happening here, and I just thought it was important to create those space, create that space, and the way I chose to do it was through an event. Mm -hmm. um, so I started in 2018. I've been doing this since 2018, before year of return, before it was, you before know, but, but sure, right, before the trends, you know <laughs> what I mean? Before the trends, um, started in 2018 and have been doing um, events every year. Mm -hmm. And then really what I saw was you know, there was this boom in interest around music, Afrobeats, mm -hmm. which I already knew. I was already a fan ever since being a student. Wow. But it was like, wow, the world is finally catching on to it. Um, but in addition to that, you know, as we started to see people come here, I'm like, that's great. And at that time, I think I had been here five, six years. Wow. That's great, but this place is an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It's an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You can come shoot your movies here. Mm -hmm. You can come buy real estate. You can invest. You can do agriculture. Mm -hmm. I got a little concerned. I'm like, okay, what can we do to make sure we're seeing and experiencing the place wholesomely? Mm -hmm. Remember going back to my North Star. Right. So I said, okay, I'm going to do a party, but following that North Star, I'm going to add something onto the experience where people can tap into the, um, the business opportunities, not just here in Ghana, but also the Caribbean. This is how Wood & Water came to be. Wood & Water is a call to people's curiosities. Mm -hmm. They haven't even asked that question yet mm -hmm. fully, mm -hmm. but it's a call to pe people's curiosities. How can I come here? What can I do? What is possible? Right. I think it takes people actually carving out those opportunities for people's curiosity mm -hmm. and wooden water is a call to that. Wow. So this year, it's the first time of us doing wooden water, but it's on the back of four years of creating spaces, curating events that highlight cultural similarities, highlight cultural commonness. And now we're elevating the experience okay. into one that speaks to business opportunities mm -hmm. in addition to entertainment and culture. Okay. So that's oh, Wood and Water.
what what should people expect you know coming to wood and water on fourth of january yes so wood and water is the ultimate okay is the ultimate vibe when it comes to ghana and jamaica we have um djs from the diaspora from new york city from the caribbean from um, la shout out to black pages we have um, djs from ghana as well you know the best of the best mm -hmm. and i've been in the system so i know who is who <laughs> right you know what i mean i know how to put them together um no but i'm really excited because i'm able to tap into people's mm -hmm. talents here um and then just connect them with what we're trying to do and just you know just have a good time for the right. diaspora so wooden water is all about high energy mm -hmm. the high energy of dance hall mm -hmm. nobody's jumping off of speakers though please <laughs> that's not the type of dance hall we're doing i know people might be like well yeah. is it even dance hall if you're not jumping <laughs> off of speakers <laughs> right no okay. um, we'll still have a really great time mm -hmm. but it's really about um highlighting the caribbean right. and and looking at the connection of course keeping the vibe of mm -hmm. Afrobeats. i mean we'll be in ghana yeah. for god's sake yeah. like you have to have the best of the best mm -hmm. of west african music mm -hmm. here so yeah. that's wood and water is all vibes it's culturally immersive mm -hmm. so we'll have jamaican food i have my family flying in to cook wow. really yeah it's not a joke thing. Wow, seriously. Yeah. Nice. Like, <laughs> nah, it's not a joke. You mean business. <laughs> Absolutely, because guess why? That's nice. Though. Yeah, anybody can say they're doing a Jamaican event. No problem. But I'm really, like, I'm really committed to yeah. people having an authentic experience. You're so passionate about it, I guess. I really am. Wow. Well, <laughs> and your whole family is coming down here. So I won't say my whole family, but I have some family members that are well, coming. That's a whole family to me. <laughs> oh, right. I have some family coming, and um, we'll do a pop-up Jamaican restaurant, a so virtual. A food joint that people can just feed stands and stuff. Yes, yeah, so right. we'll do a virtual Jamaican restaurant during the Christmas time, starting mm -hmm. December 24th. Okay. Um, going into January 24th. So okay. we'll be at Afrochella, we'll be at Black Star Line, we'll also do lunches every day and um, some after hours wow. as well. Wow, that yes. is nice. How do people get a <laughs> ticket? Because I know it runs out quickly. Yes, it's <laughs> actually going. It's crazy. Um, so what I will say is people can go to woodandwata.com. That's mm -hmm. www.woodxwatta.com. Mm -hmm. And um, also follow us on Instagram. You'll see we are in the beginning, but it's not the beginning mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Um, follow us on IG. And yeah, just, you know, mm -hmm. interact with what we have going on. Okay. Wood and Water, in terms of the content, yeah. we're going to be teaching people what we're, you know, what the party's about, what the event is about. But it really is an engaging community. Wow. It really is about the community. Wow. So, you know, subscribe. Put your email in there. Just stay close to what we're doing because it's yeah. not the first or last. No, I know. Of what I know. Party in Ghana is different. Even yes, it's party in Ghana start from November. <laughs> it goes to December <laughs> and January, February before everything goes off. So I'm going to leave every details on the screen. And uh, <laughs> if people are watching from the diaspora right now and they are not coming this December, January, <laughs> what do you have to tell them? <laughs> Miss sorry for you. Yeah, miss it out. Miss sorry for you. Miss sorry for you. Miss sorry for you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. You might have FOMO, but it's all good. This is where social media comes in. Mm -hmm. Make sure you follow Wood and Water. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you follow the Amayao Debras. Mm -hmm. Make sure you follow the who else? The Black Voltas. Mm -hmm. Follow them. You'll see what's going on um, in Ghana. And you know, connect. It doesn't. Ghana's not going anywhere. Mm. Ghana's here. So if you don't make it this year, definitely come back next year. Next year. Wooden Water will be there for you as well. Wow. Now it's good you said that. I yes. had people who moved back for 13 December. They say, and yeah. ended up staying here for the long time, a year, and then because they didn't prepare, they ended <laughs> up going back. <laughs> what would be an advice for someone who is so interested and in, you know to visit the continent? willing to do a business what would be your best advice or things that you you should like hmm, you should know this before coming yeah um so before i give my advice i'm just mm. going to respond to what you said right. you shouldn't do that 
don't think that you're gonna experience mm -hmm. over two weeks is what it would be if you moved here. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that for free. It's just different. Vacationing in a place and living, and I think anywhere, mm -hmm. is very different. So my advice, there was actually a Travel Noir uh, article about this, and I shared this advice. Number one, number one, Maya Angelou's, uh, she recounts this story of her mother speaking to her as she was leaving her mother's house. And the mother said, when you leave my house, when you walk out that door, you remember that you've been raised, which means don't go out of my house and forget your, forget your morals, mm -hmm. forget how I raised you, the things that have kept you for this journey and brought you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. Just because you moved to Ghana, um, just because you moved to Ghana and you want to maybe adapt, don't lose yourself in adapting. Mm -hmm. There's something to be said about your characteristic bringing you as far as you have come. You know, you don't have to lose yourself in trying to find yourself or find your space here. Mm -hmm. Hold on to yourself because you're unique and it's special and it's needed in the world. That's number one. Okay. Yes. Number two, I would say keep all of your accounts going. <laughs> keep all of your accounts going in the States. Keep doing your credit. Keep building your credit. If you want to invest here, you can. Um, but sometimes, you know, especially in this climate, this social climate, um, when people are, you know, over their country and want to move to Ghana, they just shut everything yeah. down. They're gone. Yeah. I kind of give up their passport. I've heard that too. Yeah, yeah they renounce their their passport. But I would say, don't do that. Keep it going. Um, we're global citizens, mm -hmm. truly, mm -hmm. um, and really the world is very small. So right. just because you come to Ghana doesn't mean that you should, um, you know, cut your ties mm -hmm. from America. America is still an awesome country. Right. Um, people can beat me if they want to, but it's <laughs> true. It's an awesome country, and you can take advantage of what's available to you, so why not? right and then come home and live the dream live the african dream here you know i always say dreams have no nationality mm -hmm. dreams mm -hmm. have no nationality so if you want to come home make this home What's do african it dream? i think the african dream is really living out your dreams in africa that's mm -hmm. it okay. i mean it doesn't have to be that literal but if it's not in africa maybe it's some the common denominator is that the mm -hmm. dream does something or is in relation to the african continent because okay. you can be in la and be living the african still dream invest. yeah still yeah. invest still support artists from the african continent mm -hmm. or tech innovators in silicon valley you can still do that okay. um this african dream i think is ubiquitous mm -hmm. it's not uh it's not bounded by location, location. No, I always say you don't have to be in one place to live it. Mm -hmm. I always say black people, we are a stateless nation. Mm -hmm. We are one nation, but we don't have one state. Mm -hmm. We're in different places, but we are one nation. So I see it that way. You know, so the African dream is just, for me, Lakeisha Marie Ford, I've done my root cause analysis. And I know number one, it's about elevating the confidence of black people. Mm -hmm. um, I want us to feel happy and excited about who we are. Mm -hmm. This is why I do the events that center our culture. It centers our culture. It doesn't center oppression. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's not about the oppressors. Mm -hmm. It's about us. That's why Jamaican or Caribbean and African cultures are in the center of my programs like Wood and Water. Mm -hmm. It's about us. Mm -hmm. So number one, we strengthen up how we feel about ourselves, and then we go into the cosmetics, the imagery, the PR, the elevating the um, profiles of the innovators, the the entrepreneurs. You know, um, getting them in those international publications. Then Office. it's the image, mm -hmm. right? Then it's the image. Um, but first and foremost, the core is about us. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the dream, mm -hmm. that's the dream. And right now, I really want to see us not leave money on the table. I think there's huge opportunity for black emerging markets to be trading together. Mm -hmm. Africa has a lot of solutions for the Caribbean and the Caribbean could use a lot of 
um, the services of businesses from the African continent for their systems to elevate their society. Right now, as we speak, there is a $1 billion trade potential between the Caribbean wow. and the African continent. Wow. And that's untapped, wow. you know? So I really am adamant about creating space mm -hmm. and programming around this to really mm -hmm. elevate the fact that mm -hmm. this thing is possible. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Wood and Wata is all encompassing as it, as it pertains to really seeing that goal come to life. But at the same time, we're not just going to call up ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a good time mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful, I must say. You, you've been doing so many on the continent. You've been doing so much. Your portfolio is amazing. I was reading so many things about you. And Wood and Water and other projects, not only what you're doing, you have new uh, projects that you're working on, mm -hmm. which I know is huge. Um, do you mind speaking to us about it and why that also started as well? Yeah. So. Um, as we speak, we are still in the process of launching. So I would say Q1 of 2023, everyone can literally follow my, uh, my personal page to learn about the launch. That is Akosia7 at A-K-O-S-U-A number seven on Instagram. But basically that platform, what that platform is about is supporting people in the diaspora that want to invest in projects on the African continent, starting with Ghana, of mm. course. Um, we're gonna have some really cool ways of, so next year, Q1, we will be rolling out a platform that will support investors in the diaspora that are interested in investing in projects on the African continent, starting with Ghana. And we have some pretty cool ways on how we're gonna roll this out. You know, there always has to be some type of a cool engaging mm -hmm. factor. So um, I'm excited. Well, you'll have to stay tuned. <laughs> you'll have to stay tuned and stay locked in mm -hmm. and make sure you follow at Akosia7. Okay. Make sure you follow at Ford Communications. Um, I've been working on this for about two and two years two, wow. two and a half years. So I'm excited to finally, you know, have it come to life. But what I'll say is, it's gonna support our investors, people who are ready to implement um, and invest in vetted projects on the African continent. Wow, that's yes. amazing. Let me, let's give this as a gift to those watching who are already interested and willing to come down here. People would like to touch um, down, see, do their own due diligence. You've been here for so long now mm -hmm. that it comes with experience and living in Ghana for that number of years, trust me, <laughs> you and I know it comes with so much knowledge. Yeah. You've done, you've done, I'm very sure you, you've done some businesses that failed and then some majority uh, succeeded. What would you say are some, you know, let's say two businesses, opportunities that you've identified that investors watching from the diaspora could invest in or um, as you already started something up can you know reach out to you and then can be able to make profit without even having to move to the continent yeah so this is where ford communications comes in in terms of supporting investors right. in implementing as well as um, our investors in ghana mm -hmm. and africa that want to do business in the caribbean mm -hmm. um, specifically speaking about jamaica right. as it as it stands mm -hmm. Um, we support with that. So, you know, I would say reach out to us at Ford Communications. Um, I'm sure you'll share the yeah. contact Everything detail. The yes, yes. So in addition to public relations, we're also looking at how we can strategically um, do business to business um, deals between the Af between the Caribbean and uh, Ghana. Mm. So Ford Communications is literally the answer. Wow, guys. If you're enjoying this amazing episode, I want you to do one thing. Please subscribe to the episode. Like the video, share to friends and family. She is an amazing young woman who moved to the continent and is doing an amazing thing. And uh, that could be it. What are you waiting for? But I have one very interesting question. I don't know if she was going to answer that. Her portfolio is amazing. Young woman, powerful, inspirational. Who is the lucky man? What is dating like? has been since you moved out, have you tried dating? Because nobody talks about this. And I always wanted to step people with this. So <laughs> pardon me, have you about, it's been seven years, right? 
did you try dating do you uh and if no why so I'll answer your first question. You said, who's the lucky man? And I'll say that is the Lord, <laughs> my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he is the lucky one. No. Um, well, he actually is the lucky one. But um, what I'll say is that, yeah, dating in, in Ghana, I mean, it definitely is a part of the experience. Um, I would say what I would say to my sisters and the men, too, that are interested okay. um you know be careful it's a uh, and just like you would have to be careful anywhere but mm -hmm. specifically talking about ghana okay. um you would have to be careful and the hack the hack is your um your network mm -hmm. your relationships you need a covering so this is someone that's like your family member. Mm -hmm. They can be an older person in society. Mm -hmm. You know, you support them, they support you. You need a covering. If you're, let's say, if you're Christian and you go to church, that can be your pastor, whatever. The point is, if you're interested in dating, that covering needs to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. We are used to in the States, or I would say in the West, Doing it by yourself. Doing it by yourself in isolation. Mm -hmm. You know, like you want, everyone wants to drink their water and mind their business, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. But in a, in, you know, if you are not from here and you enter this space and you want to date and things like that, it is important to have the person be vetted. Mm -hmm. They really? must be vet. Yes. Y you moved back without knowing any family member here. <laughs> but I have friends. Okay. Yeah, I have friends. I have friends. Okay. So that's my thing. And the thing is, I, I'm saying it that way because sometimes people think they can just find somebody mm -hmm. on the beach and start yeah. dating them. And then two years later, we'll come here, sad stories about mm -hmm. green card, passport. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. But then it's if you had your pastor or somebody yeah. to tell you, they'd be like, no, 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 this just, please, this is person. not for you. Right. <laughs> You know, see, so you need that. So that's mm -hmm. one advice that I would um, share. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm Jamaican. There's a lot of similarities, so really? you can't really pass certain mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Certain things can't pass with me. But at the same time, it's a different space. So I, you know, I've had my fair share of lessons here, and thankfully, I can sit here and wow. share with the sisters and the brothers about. Thank you so much. What you now, do. before we sign out. December is tomorrow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> People are talking about debt in December. We do have final message. Diasporans are watching. Everybody's watching Jamaica, New York, Canada. What is your final message to those watching right now? Hydrate. Drink your water and get ready. December is crazy. We don't sleep. We don't sleep. That's number one. Besides having a good time, it's a great opportunity to network and meet great people. Honestly, it's like the ultimate homecoming. Everybody's in Ghana. Everyone that knows someone is here. Mm -hmm. So it really is a great opportunity to also elevate your international connections. Um, but if you bought that $3,000 ticket from the US to Ghana, <laughs> Power, more power to you, but what I will say is you will not um, regret it. You're going to have an amazing time. Mm -hmm. And we have programs like Wood and Water. We have programs like Afrochella and the other ones. Um, but Wood and Water is there. We can't wait to see you. We hope that you're going to be here on the 26th of December as well as the 4th of January. That's when we're going to party. And I mean, it's just up it is up the spirits are up the energy is up we're excited about this december um you know web nation africa is in my office and literally they found me working yeah. working i'm getting ready for you guys mm -hmm. so i would say definitely follow our page at wood and water wood x water across all social media and hydrate 
get your electric electrolytes make sure you find your coconut man like you got to drink coconut water every day this is a part of the regimen okay this is how you last it's all about lasting it's one thing to come here but there's another thing to stay okay stay in the game so what do you have to say to people watching from the diaspora right now you're missing out if you're not here the vibes is right the food the food is right everything is right make sure you come back home come back to Ghana you had from the best man my message to the diaspora is come to Ghana in late December, early January. We're going to do a concert and it's going to be crazy. If you don't come, you're messing out. You heard it from the best. We're going to do a crazy show. Crazy. Now, I, know, I know one gentleman, I know in the comment section, I can predict the future. Someone is saying, you shared all her profile. I didn't see her private Instagram. What is your private Instagram? Oh. For those of you that <laughs> <laughs> yes, you guys can find me, Lakeisha Marie Ford, on Instagram at Akosia7. That's at A K O S U A number seven. And for those of you who don't know, Akosia means you're born on a Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. How did you get that name? I was born on a Sunday. But like. When did you realize that? Because I don't know if it's this one is packaging. This one is Ghana <laughs> packaging. <laughs> Wow. I just did my research and I mean <laughs> people mostly use the Akan names mm -hmm. for people who don't know you can also have Epe names you can have mm -hmm. Fanti names it's not just Akan names but I would say those probably are more popular so I just saw what day I was born on okay. and That's I nice. correlated that to Akosia wow. but if I were doing the Fanti names I'd be AC AC Okay. Thank you, AC. Now, <laughs> Are you fancy? <laughs> no. I'm oh, okay. Kevin. Okay. So we also use coffee. I'm, I'm a Oh, that's coffee. interesting. Yeah. Okay. You know, according to Saucy, they say I'm a bad boy. That is not true at hmm. all. Uh, say it for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. But before I let you go, mm -hmm. you are in Africa. Powerful woman, educated, smart, intelligent. You've given, you've been given the chance to change one thing mm -hmm. about the continent, Ghana. What would that one thing be? That's a loaded question. Ooh, I got it. If I were given the chance to change one thing about the continent, it would start with the people, mm. and that thing would be um, increasing critical thinking. Okay. Okay. That's it. Wow. No, I would have to say a lot, Brady. <laughs> I would say increasing critical thinking because as we know people say Africa is the future but really the future is made up of moments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right the that moments the future. right the, the future is made up of each moment that we're in mm -hmm. and I'd say I would want to increase critical thinking because mm -hmm. if we are set to be at the forefront in terms of population po uh, um, by 2050, the African continent is going to be the youngest continent, mm -hmm. and I think About probably three billion, three billion mm -hmm. right? One of the top populations on in on the right. planet, mm -hmm. right? So if that's the case, and we're going to be leading, that means there are going to be markets, there are going to be people coming in. It's important for us to have a little bit of a command on what we want for ourselves. Mm -hmm and make sure that we're on the forefront of achieving those things rather than, you know, just to be frank, um, you know, repeating colonial ways, wow. mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's gonna take critical thinking to deviate away from the way things have been done traditionally. And that's across the board for, I would say, any place that has dealt with colonization or people that come from a place that have dealt with colonization. So yeah, critical thinking is probably the wow. main thing that I would wow. change. Wow, that's amazing. Would you say you moving to the continent has been worth it for you? Wow, that is a really deep question. Um, I'm going to be very honest with you. I ask that question often. It's a matter of not knowing what your life would be had you chose a different, a different path. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just don't know. I can fathom, but I know if I didn't move to the continent, and let's say I went back to the States, joined the Foreign Service, 
and then I'm seeing year of return and mm -hmm. all these amazing things, I'd be wondering like, would my life be different if I yeah. took the chance and started my business, right. you know, back in 2016, what would my life have yeah. been? You know, you kind of don't know, yeah. to be honest. So, but what I can say is I'm proud of the woman I'm becoming. I'm proud of the people that I have around me. Um, I'm proud of the, the knowledge and the business that I've been able to do. I'm proud of the, the lessons, the, the negative and the positive. And it's, it's made me who I am. Like, I don't know if I would have been able to learn some of these things had I taken a traditional route to my career or just life, okay. you know? And one thing I will say is I've, um, this might come off pompous, but I, I promise I don't mean it this way. I've always been ahead of my time. Mm. Yeah, I've always been ahead of my time and have not necessarily done the most popular thing. But for some reason, things that I do, they eventually become popular, right? Yeah. right? So. <laughs> and I just, you know, I say that to say I'm, I'm unsure about whether it's worth it mm -hmm. in comparison mm -hmm. to what it could be, which I don't know. I'm not sure. But you don't have any regrets. But I'm confident mm -hmm. in my decision. Okay. I'm confident in my decision and I am committed to what I'm doing. Mm. And what I mean by that also, just because you decide to move to the African continent, doesn't mean that you can't move back to the States. Mm. Doesn't mean that you can't move to Portugal. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you can't move to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I think that's also an ideology so we no have. Yes, there is no limit. There's no limit. There are energetic things that spaces have, countries and environments have. Once you, when, you know, who I was when I first came here in my 20s is different. I'm a different person now. Ghana, when mm -hmm. I was in my 20s, is different from the person that I am now. Mm -hmm. Jamaica was different back then. Who Ghana was when I first moved is different compared to what America was at the same, at that right. time. You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So it could be that mm -hmm. after seven, eight years of living here, life is calling for me to make a change, but right. it doesn't mean that I can't come back, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I say all of that to say, just because you move here is not like a permanent thing. Right. I truly see us you as global. global yeah, yeah, we're global. Mm -hmm. We're global. Even if I was in America for seven, eight years, I'd probably be ready to move somewhere else. Right ready like let's go <laughs> you know so um i'm confident in my decision right. and at the same time i don't feel um like i don't feel worried about sticking and staying if it yeah. doesn't work you can go you can try somewhere yeah you can else. try somewhere else what would you say ghana has taught you one lesson one lesson Multiple only lessons. one there's so many okay let's do three then <laughs> okay <laughs> wow <laughs> Hmm, Ghana, what has Ghana, what hasn't Ghana taught me? Um, what has Ghana taught me? I'm kind of drawing a blank, but trust me, there's so much. Mm -hmm. I would say stay true to who you are. Karma is real. Mm -hmm. Karma. Karma. Okay. It's real. It's real. This is a very spiritual place. Mm -hmm. Don't play. <laughs> I feel if I'm washed, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, don't play. Don't play. <laughs> I say that to say integrity as much as possible. Keep your integrity. Keep the righteousness up. You know, and I'm not trying to be self-righteous. I'm not perfect at all. I've made mistakes. I'm not perfect, but what I do know, my lessons. And seeing things is that the righteousness is what keeps you just yeah. going, keeps your favor going, keeps your peace. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people think they can cut corners because of who they know and that type of thing. That's the, mm -hmm. that's kind of in the system. Right. But, you know, you know what's integral and you know what's not integral. Mm -hmm. So just do your best. Okay. I would say that. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah. It's been a pleasure.
and thank you for honoring me by you know coming on the show as well. It means a lot to me. You're on big social uh, um, media companies, BBC. That is huge. And guys, this is she, huge. They, uh, thank you. When, <laughs> no, 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 no. when she said she wanted to do it, I was so excited. And uh, we talked so much behind the cameras, yes. but um, do you mind talking about what happened with BBC in Ghana? I'm a black woman. Oh, the <laughs> statement. Everyone loved that statement. That was um, very famous. Okay. Yeah, they used that clip. I think I said, I'm not, oh, I said, there is no such thing as a black woman in Ghana. I'm a woman in Ghana. Yes. And, um, you know, that was in response to a question. Mm. The question was, as a black woman, how has, what has your experience been like doing business? Mm -hmm. And I immediately was like, as a black woman, you know, like that, I don't believe needs to be the qualifier of the question because right. if it's the color of my skin, I'm a part of the majority. Mm -hmm. You might want to say as an American, how right. is it doing business? As a Jamaican American, how is it? As a woman in business, how yes. is it doing? You know, or if I were a white or Asian woman, then you can ask as an Asian woman, as a white woman, how is it doing right. business here? But to come and ask me and my blackness, mm -hmm. In, your in this <laughs> in this Ghana about my black mm -mm -mm. you can't lead that way right so it was almost a correction to say you know there's no such thing as othering me when I'm not othered right, right. not from the color of my skin wow. you know wow. so that was um that was the only thing but still you know phenomenal opportunity great interview um, awesome team but yeah, that was also an opportunity to have that conversation starter. Wow. You know? Thank you. Yeah. That was good for me. I was going to keep that <laughs> in there. So guys, if you did enjoy the video and you did enjoy the episode, please, one more time, every information will be in the description as well as on the screen. Network. Seven years of living in Ghana comes with a lot of experience, I'm telling you. You wouldn't like to make a mistake by not doing due diligence or making moves blindly. You might lose some money in the process of doing that so take advantage network get in touch and uh, you would thank me later for that if you're watching for the first time please react again subscribe like the video share to friends and family and uh, if you're interested in sharing your story on our platform the email is going to be on the screen webnationafrica at gmail.com please send us an email and you might be the next person to share your story with us and one more time thank you so much uh, for watching and uh, let's say bye-bye to them Hi everyone, make sure you subscribe to Wood and Water and Ford Communications and keep it locked. And if you want to connect with me personally, you can go to Instagram. I'm at Akosia7 and that's it.